Hey, here we are again, and I want to share something with you that um, the Lord gave me early this year, but you know what, I don't think it's a matter of the date, sometimes it is, the date will speak to us about certain mm -hmm. things, but um, it's a timing and that it's for the body of Christ yeah. for now and, and, you know, beyond. But the Lord spoke to me early this year, and this is what he said, I want you to know fire which is man, and glory, which is his children. And then he went on to say, I'm coming with a broom to sweep out the cobwebs of people's minds. Thought patterns must change, and as they do, the desire for the holy fire shall return, and my children shall once again see my glory. There's been too much entertainment and no habitation. Mm. My glory is found in the habitation of the saints. Holy convocation dwells in my midst. This is where I'm found. Okay, so, now go back over that. He wants us to know the fire, which is man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... We are the ones to carry the fire of God. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be the holy temple of God and carry that fire. Yeah. See, when we're mm -hmm. clean vessels before the Lord, then he can impute that fire. Mm -hmm. I, we all have it by the Holy Spirit. We all yeah. have it. But for the most part, it's like hidden under the... You know, under a lampstand, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the lampstand is hidden because we have too much of ourself in us, and it can't. Yeah. All, we see somebody, and we see them mm -hmm. because we have stuff in us that we need to get rid of. Yeah. So, and he said, "Okay, so he wants us to know the fire, which is man, and the glory, which is his children." So, when we walk in the fire of God, that glory that's his children they're going to produce that glory so it'd be like um, mm -hmm. people get healed out of the glory that we produce mm -hmm. just like peter when he walked down the road people saw the glory of god in him what yeah. that what the glory touched people were healed yeah okay so he said i'm coming with a broom to sweep out the cobwebs of people's minds see it gets stuck up here Yep. We got all kinds of things going on in our mind, which clogs the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that pipeline between us and the Father. So He's coming with His broom to sweep it out. He said, Thought patterns must change, and as they do, the holy fire shall return. And then His children will once again see His glory. Okay, so. It, mostly has to do with our minds. Yeah. Are we willing to submit to the Lord and let him do a total cleansing in us? I was, um, Lynn and I were talking recently, I have a, a friend, several friends that are uh, dealing with dementia and Alzheimer's right now. Mm. And one person, really he's been in heaven for quite a few years now but here's the thing in our mind and we just did a video on offenses mm -hmm. in our minds that's where the offense takes place it's in our right. heart but it's in our mind okay and it's in our mind that we have to let things go and I believe this is what the Lord's been showing me in our lifetime we have different things occur good yeah. things and bad things mm -hmm. And when something bad, whether it's just a little bit bad, or if it's really demonic, if it's a lot demonic, whatever it is, when that offense, that hardship comes, the quicker we can deal with it and let it go, and I'm saying yeah. you can let it go immediately, get let that offense go, yeah. then it's gone in your life, okay? You release it to the Lord, and He forgives you for it, and it's it's done. Yeah. If we hold on to it, then it's going to be a constant reminder. Even sometimes it settles deep in our soul that we mm -hmm. don't remember it. 
okay? And just recently something, something the Lord reminded me of took place when I was five years old. So that was a long time ago. <laughs> but it took place when I was five years old. And even though I didn't know it, I held a hurt and a resentment and an unforgiveness towards quite a few people because of something that happened when I was a child and I was really an innocent victim, but yet that offense set up in me. And when I was taking communion just a few days ago, the Lord showed me that and I'm like, oh my goodness. See, even though it was buried deep inside me that I, in my own mind, didn't remember it, mm -hmm. it was there. Yeah. And he wanted that removed so it's just one of those little things that comes out, okay, that makes me one step closer to him without a fence, without a barrier. Yeah. So I can be a holy vessel to the Lord. Mm -hmm. What happens when people hold offenses, they hold that hurt, then later in life, if they have dementia or Alzheimer's, their mind gets stuck. Mm -hmm in that place of offense. Well, it's because they've, they've put themselves in a holding pattern. Right. Of, of unforgiveness. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's a lot of, and I think more men than women, because there's more men in the military than women, but they went through tragedies in their military life. If you've seen the movie Unbroken or Unbroken Path to Redemption, those movies... That there, it's a true story, mm -hmm. and it will reveal to you a lot about the mind. Because if you hold something in offense or in unforgiveness later in life, it's going to be there. You'll never get out of it. That's what these people that are in, um, like Alzheimer's or dementia, mm -hmm. later in their life, they become they can become very angry. And they take out their anger on their caregiver, their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because they see them as the enemy. Mm -hmm. Instead of the um, Korean or the Japanese or the German or, you know, the, um, the Vietnamese, whoever, whoever they were the, fighting. Yeah, in the, whoever in, the yeah, enemy was in the war. Yeah, Iraqi, whatever. Whoever they were fighting, they don't see them. They see you as their enemy. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so vital that... Every Holy Spirit, that's why we have Holy Spirit, and He is the one that reminds us. Mm -hmm. He brings the conviction, not condemnation, but conviction. He convicts us of our sin mm -hmm. so we can repent of it, and we're free of it. Once, you're, once you've repented of it, truly from your heart, not just your lips, it's a done deal. And yeah. only the enemy will bring it back to remind you of it. Yeah. So. And even, even people that are... are uh, uh, experiencing dementia or whatever that you know that's not an unrecoverable sickness or illness the Lord is able to heal them and uh, even even in the dementia they're able to uh, be walked through forgiveness or uh, you know getting over their offenses that it, it's I think I think it's a, a constant reminder it's like that they keep going through that because that's I mean that's the holding pattern that they're put in but mm -hmm. but really it's you know what it's opportunity after opportunity to I, I think once those uh, those are dealt with that it's dealt with it's it's not going to come back you know they yeah. uh, I think that's a key in um, their deliverance from that sickness, mm -hmm. you know, is is uh, an element of forgiveness or letting go of an offense. Right. You know, I was just thinking about the um, the vets. Mm -hmm. Like we said, the vets haven't been treated right or fairly, mm -hmm. and and they haven't. Maybe by the VA, but what about the church? Mm -hmm. You know what. These men and women, they need, they need good medical care. Yeah. Absolutely, they do. They deserve it. They gave their life, you know. I mean, they put their life on the, on the line and kept guard for us. But So they deserve the very best. But the church, 
the vets, the veteran mm -hmm. hospital, what have you, praise God for them, but they medicate. Yeah. You go see the psychiatrist there, they give you medication. Mm -hmm. And that's like putting a, a Band-Aid on a hemorrhage. Judgment church, comes first at yeah. the house of the Lord. So the that's church our really needs to have some first aid units set up for the veterans mm -hmm. and help them to be delivered from the demons that have tormented them during mm -hmm. during their stint in the military. Some yeah. of these guys are going back now, you know, they're going back time after time. You know, how do they deal with that? How do they deal with it when they come home? I mean, it's a mm -hmm. horrible thing. So I didn't mean to get yeah. off on all that so much. But no. um, well, you see, and and the the whole thing is like what you were saying before with the with the glory and like um, I see it like the um, Lord actually showed me like an egg, yeah, <laughs> an egg. We're we're like an egg. You know, in a way, or you could say, uh, like the New Testament said, the jars of clay, where there's there's that fire or that glory that's inside of us. But like like an egg, you know, nobody can see it, and and we've got to we've got to actually let ourselves get broken, you know, past mm -hmm. that point of being offended and everything, so we can let the let the glory come out, you know. Otherwise, uh, it's just hidden under a bushel like Jesus said it, it's just hidden away and nobody's going to see it but if you're you know if you're going to step up like Gideon's army and and be one of those 300 out of how many thousands you know uh, you're, you're basically going to take your your uh, your jar of clay with a fire in it and break it open you know, you're the the glory is going to get out, and it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be an amazing thing. But you know, we yeah, well. we got to come in in a, like a in a brokenness, and and allow the Lord to do what He's going to do and help as He's wanting to do it. That's right. Not not that's our right. way. And, yeah. You know, that's why I was saying that judgment comes first to the house of the Lord. If we if we let government or you know whatever. You know the welcome wagon take over. You know what our responsibility as the welcome wagon to heaven. That if we're doing, if we're letting someone else do God's job, then uh, you know it's not going to get done right. And if we're trying to do it in and of ourselves or out of His will, it's not going to get done right. There's a whole bunch of wrong ways to do it, and there's one way that God wants to do it. So. Yeah, it's, it's funny because just recently we talked about the widows and orphans yeah. and how there's been a delay in the church because, you know, the outpouring, because they haven't really taken care of the widows and orphans, okay? They get brushed, yeah. shoved under the, the carpet somewhere, but the same way with the vets, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so I think the church has been lack mm -hmm. in a lot of areas, but... Um, so the last of that was the Lord said, there's been too much entertainment and no habitation. Mm -hmm. But his glory is found in the habitation of his saints. And the holy convocation dwells in his midst. That's mm -hmm. where he is found. So yeah. when we can come together in that, um, it starts individually, mm -hmm. at home, cell groups, home groups, whatever you call them, in the church, you know, but we need we need to be covering each other's backs, and mm -hmm. when we come together, we don't need the entertainment, you know. He, God's the entertainer, you know. We seek Him; He's all that we need. It's a lot more he is. He yeah. sure is. There's never a dull moment with the Lord. Mm -mm. So anyhow, well, let's just say, Lord, come sweep out, bring Your holy broom and sweep out our mm -hmm. minds yeah. so that. You know, that we can be pure and holy vessels unto you. So we can be the fire and we can house the glory for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.